And that's what Joshua had, and that's what made him effective as a leader. And even when he made a mistake, even when he failed in his judgment, in his assessment, even when he was presumptuous, it did not ruin his effectiveness as a leader because he was quick to get back on track and quick to once again fall before the Lord and seek the Lord for guidance. Now follow the narrative. And pick up the narrative, if you would, in verse 7 of Joshua 10. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thy hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. And Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly and went from Gilgal all night. It was a 25-mile trip from Gilgal to Gibeon. And Joshua had his men to prepare themselves to go to war, and they marched all night long. It was a 4,000 4, feet incline they had to climb in terms of change in elevation. It was an exhausting trip, but his commitment was so great, he would not be deterred, nor discouraged, nor grow weary, because the battle belonged to the Lord. And so he moves his men in a position to fight. Verse 10, and the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Horon and smote them to Azekah and unto Makeda. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Horon that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died, and there were more which died with hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then spake Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thy still unto Gibeon, and thy moon in the valley of Ajalon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Let's stop right there. Not only did Joshua have stature with men, but he had favor with God. He had favor with God. And if you decide that you're going to be a man or woman of integrity, of honesty, of character, not only will you have stature with men, but you will have favor with God. And sometimes your stature with men cannot take you but so far. And sometimes the very stature that men will give to you, they will try to knock that very pedestal that they've given you to stand on from under you if you start to challenge or confront them or make them feel uneasy. But when your stature with men is in jeopardy, your favor with God will carry you through. And so after marching all night, 25 miles to get to the, the place, army is tired and weary, and going up against a formidable before, God showed up there on the battlefield. And the Bible says as Joshua and his men, as they were wielding the sword, and then the enemy was trying to get away from them, that God called hailstones to come down out of heaven. That God had actually allowed the kings of Jerusalem to allow themselves to bring them together so that God could fight on Joshua's behalf. And even in his mistake of entering into the alliance with the Gibeonites, God had not given up on him. Now, someone needs to hear that. And someone needs to realize that, that God is not a God who just throws folk away. And he disciplines us. Make no mistake about it. And Joshua made a mistake now. And just because God didn't throw him away, doesn't mean that God didn't discipline him. And it does not mean that there were not consequences that he had to deal with for the rest of his ministry and for the rest of his reign as the leader of the people. But God was still with him. And God restored him, and God energized him to do a great work. Some of you, who you blew it this past week, and your self-confidence is somewhat shattered. Your self-esteem has been jolted. And, and as, as I show people all the time, what you must be careful of, is that you cannot allow your self-esteem to be held by the popular opinion of, a, of another person, regardless of how much you even love them. 
Are you with me? And I love my wife and my children dearly. But sometimes they think that I'm the dumbest person in town, the meanest dad around, the worst husband that's ever been placed on the face of the planet. And on that particular day, they might be right, but I ain't listening. I ain't listening. There's some things I just don't listen to. I can look you dead in the eye, but I ain't listening. I, I'm not buying that. I'm not accepting that. Because anything that is a, is a threat to injure my person, to destroy me as a person, to leave me as a shattered mess on the floor, it isn't healthy for me. I can take criticism. But when my person is attacked at that level, I cannot allow my person to be held by your opinion. And nor can you allow your personhood to be held by the opinion of someone else. You must know that God is with you. And greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And you must talk to yourself. I tell you all the time, you must continually talk to yourself because there are so many subliminal messages that are out there in the society today to undermine people's self-esteem and to undermine people's sense of worth and people's values. People will flip you around on jobs, and hold you hostage by your annual performance appraisal. And that whole system is a whole joke. I would tell my boss all the time, and I know you have to write something down on that paper, but I want you to understand that I know how good I am at what I do. And I also know that you guys only have so much money that you can divvy up to all of us. And so that appraisal has to be consistent with how much money you're going to give me. And so I will accept what you write down, but I know how good I am at what I do because I know my commitment to it. And so how I feel about myself and my performance is not going to be based on what you write down on paper. I am open to your suggestions and your input, but I know how committed I am to being good at what I do. Are you following me? And some of you, you got to understand that. And some of you students this week, you went to school, and some of you really did study, but you still failed the test. And you know what I say to that? It's what I always used to say when I was in college. I had this one professor, and he always gave these very difficult exams. Toughest class I had in college was thermodynamics. It was rough. And I would always say I knew 99% of the material that we had to study. And this idiot gave a whole test on the 1% I didn't know. He gave the wrong test. <laughs> if he'd have gave the right test, I'd have had a 99. I still know what I know. And now I know what I don't know. So if I ever get a test again on that material which I failed, I won't fail it again. Because I'll, I'll master that material also. And so even in my failure, I'm stronger, I'm better, I'm improved because I've benefited from my failure. Are you following me? If you're a person of integrity, a person of character, you have favor with God and God will show up and fight for you even when your enemies coalesce to come against you. And not only will God give you favor, but God will give you power over your enemies. Now look at what the text says. In verse 12, it says, Joshua was fighting the Amorites, but he had a problem. He knew that he didn't have enough daylight to get the job done. He knew his men had marched 25 miles all night. They were tired. They'd been fighting uh, from the early hours of the morning, now it's about midday, and Joshua would know this is an all-day job. And if darkness falls upon us, and if they run back into the hills, there is no way we'll be able to get them. And then we'll have to fight them again in their respective cities. And so the Bible says that Joshua prayed. And he prayed to God, and he says, Lord, don't let the sun go down. And don't let the moon be moved. And this is one of those verses of scripture that in the scientific community that they use to argue against the veracity of the Bible. Uh, that the Bible cannot be true. The scientists will say there's no way the Bible can be true because now we have enough scientific evidence to know that it is impossible scientifically for the sun to stand still. As a matter of fact, you know, in the old world, they thought that the earth was the center of the universe and everything was revolving around the earth. And so for Joshua to say to the sun to stand still, that was an exercise in futility because even if the sun stood still, that would not cause it to remain daylight because the day and the night is not determined by the sun standing still, but it's the earth that's rotating on its axis. And so the earth 